Imagine, the earth is changed, the sky has changed, it will look nothing like this world. Imagine yourself right now that you are in a world where you cannot recognize anything. You cannot recognize any marks. You don't know where your house is anymore. You don't know where the continents are. You don't know where you are. The earth looks flat, no markings, no valleys, no hills, and it's white. And the sky is a different sky. In some tafasir it says it's also white. The sun is no longer there in the position you see it. It has been brought very near, very large, probably as some hadith say, kalmil. It looks like only a mile away. Some scholars said we don't know what al-mil means. Is it distance, mile? Because the Arabs used to use that word, mile, meal. The point is, the sun is very close. You are gathered with all the creation from the beginning of the creation of this world to the end of time. Everybody is naked. Everybody is barefooted. On that day, the matter is too serious for anybody to even look at one another. Imagine yourself in this life and your life is threatened. You're about to die. And there are naked people all around you. The only thing you'll be focusing on is how to prevent your death. On the day of judgment, there is no more death. The only thing we are awaiting, where are we going to go? Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ On that day, every human being will remember. وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى But what would that remembrance benefit him or her on that day? It is as though all the people will know what they have come to. The reality becomes known to everyone. Allah says, before this day, you didn't really know it in reality. And now we have release that veil that covered your eyes and now you can see reality you can see the angels you can see the day of judgment you can see everything in reality as if this world was a dream and that the other world is the true reality the prophets are concerned did they deliver their message what are their people going to say the people are concerned the devils are gathered and they're concerned the shayateen the jinns the animals are gathered and there is no injustice on that day it is the day of reckoning the day of accountability that's the day that's going to decide whether it's eternal heaven or eternal hellfire people are gathered with different types of people and they are gathered in different forms and shapes and ways all depending on what you left this world on what kind of deeds did you leave this world with on the day of judgment, each person will be gathered and resurrected on the form that they died in or on the deeds that they died in, the form of their deeds. Meaning, what kind of a lifestyle were they leading before they died? On that. And even if it's the bad deed that you died on, you'll be raised on that deed. Or if it's a good deed you died on, you'll be raised on that good deed. One thing that caught my eye once, I saw someone sent me this on YouTube, of a man, I think it was Masjid al-Nabawi, who died in his prostration. You saw it? He's dead in his prostration. And another one of youth flown out of a car and died while playing heavy music, and they died with a scream. Which one do you want to die on? Will the angels come to you and hug you and say, this is the day you have been promised, don't worry? Or will you be the type where the angels say, look at Jahannam, look at it, this is what's awaiting for you. This is the day of your misery. Some people will be resurrected with enormous light. In the Sahih Hadith, the Prophet ﷺ tells us some people will be raised with enormous light. This Hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas. Enormous light, the size of a mountain. Imagine somebody now walking. And they've got light encompassing their body the size of a mountain. 
They're walking and this light is emanating from the size of a mountain. Everywhere, everywhere they walk, you see this huge light. You can see it from a distance, right? You can see it from here to probably 20 suburbs down. These are the people who died with accumulated good deeds throughout their life and minimal sayyat and they had repented. So they died on righteousness. And there will be people who will have light the size of towers, high towers. Be walking this light around them. And people will be walking with light as big as a man. So only their size, just a little bit of light outside of their body wherever they walk. And there are people who will be, get, who will be resurrected with light emanating from the tip of their finger or their thumb. Actually, Ibham, the index finger. The tip of the index finger, as the Prophet ﷺ says. Sometimes it lights on and sometimes it goes off. This is the light that the people on that day will use to cross over Jahannam to the other side. And there are those who are filled with darknesses around them. Dhulumat. Where is this light coming from and where are these darknesses coming from? The light is an interpretation of the purity of the heart of that person. This pure heart, my dear brothers and sisters, is interpreted into this huge light, real light. You see it with your eyes. As for those with darknesses, their hearts were darkened. Allah SWT describes these hearts in the Quran in various verses. Sometimes He calls them the rusted hearts. Other times the blanketed hearts. Blankets upon blankets of darkness. And what does kufr mean? To dig something, bury it and cover it with soil. So these hearts are covered in darknesses. On that day, it's interpreting darknesses around them. There's no light to shine. The heart has left Allah and so Allah turns away from them. We did not oppress them, Allah says. But they oppressed themselves. Allah says in the Quran about people who have abandoned their heart and abandoned their Lord knowingly, knowingly, who have heard about this deen, understood it and rejected it, Allah says, These people are like livestock, an'am, livestock. Some of them are even worse. On that day, they'll wish they were soil, but they can't even be like animals. This believer will say, well, if we want to use a bit of, and the rejecter of this faith, the hider of the truth, will wish that they were turned into turab, into soil like the animals. Just one last thing to describe that moment. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says, on that day, the people will respond to the caller. There will be a caller who will direct people to where they have to go by force. Go this way. You go that way. You come this way. This person who calls you, this angel, does not lose his way. You will be going to the correct position. The voices are silenced. The people don't, they don't know what to say anymore. Imagine uncountable numbers of people you don't hear a single whisper wallah wallahi not a single whisper not a whisper allah says wa khashaatil aswatu lir rahman the voices are silenced to the most merciful fala tasma'u illa hamsa you will not hear on that day any allah describes it you can't hear anything except one thing hamsa the silent tapping of feet walking, people just walking here and there, like that. No one's talking. Eyes are looking up high. People are walking. It's like we're intoxicated. Where are we going? In 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 in, in, a, in madness. You know, don't know what to say. No one can speak. Not even the angels, unless Allah gives them permission. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim. Allah knows everything that you have come with. Wa ma khalfahum. And whatever you have kept in secret or left behind thinking no one else will know. And no one even can know the amount of knowledge that Allah knows about you on that day. Allah will inform us about ourselves things that will come manifest 
which we were confused about and on that day Allah will make it so clear to us to show us our whether we had gone on the right path or on the wrong path whether we deserve to be punished or not to let make us understand remember the hadith that no one will be punished in hellfire until they are convinced that they deserve it Allah calls himself in this verse now twice now here Ar-Rahman the most merciful it is out of Allah's mercy that he does all of this allows the people to know forgives if he wills and he will forgive on that day many things but those who are destined to his wrath no one can save them except he Allah says on that day all the faces shall be humbled to the all-powerful the Almighty and whoever has carried with him or her on that day deeds of, of, of victimization to himself deeds of oppression deeds of haram then they will be in misery and whoever had done good deeds which Allah is pleased with while they are believers you're a believer and you do good deeds on that day you will not fear any oppression any haram deeds that you have done nor will you experience any loss yani on that day there will be people who have done righteous deeds and they carry them with them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us some bad deeds which you have done you will not be made afraid of them you'll be forgiven them and you think that you're going to lose but on that day Allah will make it in a way which you will not lose so Allah knows who will win who will lose who deserves and who doesn't so we will be pushed on that day to where we have to go the intercession happens the books are given we are forced to read from our books even the illiterate person will be able to read the illiterate person who did not know how to read or write in this world will be given the knowledge and the skill and the ability in its highest form to read on that day you will read in a way in which you will understand very clearly you will read your records what do these records look like what do these books look like the knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the past when computers first came out laptops they used to write in the papers notebook four thousand dollars and I used to think to myself notebook it's ten cents in Kmart four thousand dollars but they call it a notebook however it's not the notebook that we know notebook a laptop a highly sophisticated system so when Allah says records books suhuf pages what is the nature of these pages and records it is the knowledge is with Allah but let me tell you something these pages these records these books that's the name given to them on that day carry every single deed good or bad past or present or future from the beginning of time to the end your whole life it carries the secrets and the open everything it can encompass it all we humans have invented computers that hold hundreds of gigabytes of memory and we say whoa you can carry the information of the whole universe in this don't we say that so if this is the what the human being is able to do Allah's ability is unlimited and his invention subhana his his creation is beyond our minds beyond our understanding now at this point my dear brothers and sisters the books are received some judgment has happened however the punishment has not begun and the reward has not begun some people receive their records in their right some people are delayed a little bit to receive their records in the right it's up to Allah but the next stage after that is the scales so now the evidence is shown the debate has happened the records are justified the witnesses have given their claim have bared with their witness the servant is now clean or clear about their records Allah has not wiped anything yet and Allah has not punished anything yet so now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to the next stage which is to weigh the value 
of the good deeds you have and the value of the bad deeds you have. And here on the scale is the decision of what you are worth, how much you deserve of rewards and how much you deserve of punishment. What kind of deeds will remain and what kind of deeds will be taken off? What extra secret deeds haven't been revealed yet in the records? Because there are still secret deeds which Allah leaves out of His mercy to reveal. And there are some sins which were not included in the records only a little bit, but now something's going to happen. What is it? The scales are brought. Allah says in the Quran, and on that day, we will place the just scales, the just scales. And so no soul will be treated unjustly, even with an atom's worth of deed. And if it were the size of a mustard seed of good deeds, we will reveal it. We will bring it to the scale. And if it were the size of a mustard seed of bad deed, we will bring it and place it on the scale. وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ Such a judgment, accountability by us is sufficient enough. What else can, they, can there be more justifiable than that? More of an accountability than that? Yeah, and every single whisper, every little deed that we hid or did in open will be brought from those records and placed into that scale. What is the nature of this scale? What does it look like? Again, the knowledge of its nature is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scale, however, is a type of creation that Allah had created. And in the hadith of Sahih, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which came in Al-Hakim by Salman al-Farisi, who is the narrator radiallahu anhu, he says, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the scale will be set up on the day of judgment. If the weight of the heavens and the earth, if the weight of the heavens and the earth are to be measured by the scale, this scale will be, will do it efficiently, efficiently without any strain whatsoever. It'll weigh it. In another hadith, the scale can contain the heavens and the earth if need be. The, literally. The, the, earth, the skies and the earth. You can put it in it and it'll weigh it. It'll take it. The hadith continues. When Allah created the scale, the angels asked, For whom does this scale measure, O our Lord? And Allah replied, Whomever I will among my creation. Then the angel said, O oh Allah, indeed, we didn't worship you the way you are worthy of. When they see the might and the power and the accountability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the angels themselves, they fear this day. You know, what's our fate going to be? O oh, our Lord, we haven't worshipped you enough. Shufa. Compare that to a person who deceives themselves today. Goes to give a donation, a hundred dollars then believes inside of him that I've given a hundred dollars. I can do a few haram things now because now I deserve Jannah. I deserve Jannah. I've given a hundred bucks. It's a lot of money. Who gives a hundred bucks these days? As if now you deserve Jannah. As if made a condition on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A hundred dollars equals Jannah. Or those who debate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh God, I didn't ask you to make me. Here are the angels... This is the lack of our understanding. This is not a question for us to ask. Because at the moment, we haven't had this conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's important now is that we give Allah's due first. And then Allah will reveal everything else. To the point where He even shows us Himself, subhana, and you converse with Him in Jannah, insha'Allah. The angels are saying, Oh, our Lord, we haven't worshipped you as you are worthy of. Allah says, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم. The angels don't disobey a single thing which Allah commands them. And here they are saying, Oh, our Lord, we have not worshipped you as you are worthy of. 
The Prophet وسلم, said to his companions once, Wallahi, لَن يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ أَحَدٌ بِعَمَلِهِ No one will enter paradise just because of their deeds. Just because of their deeds. قَالُوا وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ They said, not even you, a messenger of Allah. He said, وَلَا أَنَا Not even I. إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلٍ Only on one condition. If Allah decide to encompass me or to shower me with his blessings and his mercy. It is his mercy and blessings which we seek. Our deeds earn us his mercy and his blessings, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is all you want. It is reported in one of the hadiths that a man will be brought to the scale on the day of judgment. And he has done deeds as far as your eyes could see. The angels carry his deeds and they're about to be placed on the scale. Sizes of mountains of good deeds. And when they are placed, Allah says, admit my servant into paradise with my mercy with my mercy, not with his deeds, with my mercy. He deserves my mercy. The servant then says, my Lord, I want to enter paradise with my deeds. He thinks that he can get more for his deeds. So then Allah says, very well, if that's the way you want to measure it, then we have to be fair. I, you owe me something. You owe me the blessing of the eyesight which I gave you. You didn't pay me for it. I just gave it to you and you enjoyed it and you thanked me for it. I want you now to repay me for that. So the angels bring the blessing of the eyesight and they place it in the scale. And it is heavier than all the good deeds the man had done. It's not equal to this blessing which Allah had given. He says, my, he says enter him into hellfire. And the servant says, Rabbi, I want to enter because of your mercy. Birahmatik, birahmatika ya Rabbi. With your mercy. Allah's mercy is the thing which we want. Our deeds. If it wasn't for Allah, we would not know what's right and wrong. We would not have the ability to do anything. But because we have a choice and we choose to do the good and we choose to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can rise even better and higher than the angels themselves. Than the angels. Allah's reward is amazing. Don't waste your time thinking about doubtful issues here and there. Don't waste your time. The Quran is here. It is proof. No one can deny it. Your deen is proof. You are on the right deen, my dear brothers and sisters. The scale therefore decides what your level and value is. There is a difference of opinion about what is actually weighed on the scale. Some of our scholars said that it is your actual deeds that are brought and turned into objects that can be weighed in a certain form and they are placed in that scale. Some others, they said, no, it is yourself. Your actual self is brought and you're placed on that scale to see your value based on certain verses in the Quran. In Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ states, narrated in, collected in Bukhari and Muslim, on the day of judgment, a person may have a very gigantic body and however, he weighs less than the weight of a mosquito's wing in Allah's sight. In this world, you may have a gigantic body. But on the day of judgment, you may weigh less than a mosquito's wing in Allah's eyes. Read if you wish, the Prophet ﷺ says, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمُ الْيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا We shall not give them, the disobedient ones, any weight on the day of judgment. This is a metaphor. Your weight. What do our scholars say? They combine between the two opinions. You, your body, yourself is given value and your deeds are given value together. So you are both weighed at a value. What is your value? To Allah's sight, the best is the one who is most righteous. Not the fattest, not the heaviest in body, not the richest. To Allah, it's in righteousness. Allah says, Inna akramakum atqakum. The most honored among you in God's eyes are the ones who are most righteous or the ones who are most God-fearing, meaning you stay away from the things that displease Allah as much as you can. What is your weight, therefore, my dear brother and sister, on that day, on that scale? What is your weight? <clears throat> there are secretly done deeds which are good, and Allah will bring them on that weight. A person will come on that day. This is also in the hadith. It's in Tirmidhi, Ahmad, Abu Dawood, and others. 
that Abdullah ibn Umar narrates. On the day of judgment, Allah will save in public. He will save a man who is from the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, from Hellfire. Allah will order the bringing of 99 books that record the deeds of the man in his life. Each book is as far as the sight of the man can see. As far as the sight of the man can see. Records full of deeds, bad deeds. Allah will say, go with your records to be weighed. He goes and then he comes back in misery. He's lost. Obviously his records didn't weigh much as far as his eyes could see. Each page as far as his eye could see. Then Allah says, do you have an, any objection to what our angels wrote in your records? And he will say, no, Ya Rabb, I have no objections. Allah will ask him, do you have any excuse? And the man will say, no, my Lord, I have no excuse. Allah will say, okay, but you still have with us a reward of a single good deed as no one is wrong today. Some hidden good deeds which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surprises you with if you deserve it. And then Allah will give this man, obviously order the angels to give this man a card, a card to place on the scale. In this card, the following words are written. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger. And the man says, Oh God, how heavy does this card weigh to the weight of 99 books of records? It weighs nothing. And the card will be placed and it will cause, and the hadith says it will cause the bar of the books to swing to its side sharply. Rasulullah is speaking here in a way that we, don't, we cannot imagine. But imagine now scales. If you had scales on earth and, and one side is so heavy, you place a card on it and it makes the scale spin sharply because my dear brothers and sisters nothing weighs heavier than the word of Tawheed La ilaha illallah obviously it has conditions La ilaha illallah means that you fulfill its conditions so you say it and you fulfill its conditions there's no use saying I'm the strongest but you got no strength you can say it from now till the end of time you're not no use saying I know this and I know that but you don't know there's no use saying, I'm a doctor. You can say it from now to the end of time. You can carry books on top of your shoulders of all the medicine. But if you don't know it, you don't have the skill, you are not a doctor. If you say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you fulfill its conditions. If you fulfilled its conditions, but you come on a day of judgment with lots and lots of bad deeds, but you had tawheed and you fulfilled the conditions of tawheed, then that will weigh heavier on the scale on that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to specific people on that day with His mercy.